Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 here again. And today we're gonna to be covering problem number 18 on Leak Code, the for sum problem. Now, uh, before we jump into it, let me just say if you haven't done the two sum or three sum problems, I would pause this video, go back and try those first. I have explanations and answers to both of those. I'll leave that in the in the description below. Um, now, if you have and you're stuck on it, you've come to the right place. Uh, let me start off by saying that this problem is by no means trivial, and I think that this uh, this one's rated a medium on Leak Code. It could arguably even be hard. Um, I really I don't think it's obvious whatsoever. However, we'll come up with a very intuitive approach on how to tackle it, so you'll know how to deal with it when you get to it in your interview settings. Now, what the foursome problem says is if you're given an, an array of integers, such as the one here in this example, uh, we need to find all the unique quadruplets, which will give us a, a sum of kind of a, these quadruplets, called the numbers A, B, C, and D, adding up to a certain target that we're given. Um, in this example, the target is zero, and, and this is our array right here. And so the numbers negative one, zero, zero, one, um, negative two, negative one, one, two, negative two, zero, zero, two, all add up to, to zero individually. So how do we go about this? Well, if you see my threesome video, you, you'll kind of know that uh, what we said is there always exists a, a brute force solution to these n sum, uh, these n sum problems. Typically, if um, you know if we're doing let's say a, a three sum problem, our our brute force solution can be n cubed. If we're doing four sum, it'll be n to the power of four, and and so on and so forth. So uh, generally speaking, maybe I'll, I'll call this kind of O of of m to the power of n. Um, now, there is a way to optimize this slightly, or rather even before I say that, let me just say that to get the brute force solution, which again is always one you should mention in your interviews, um, this would just be a, a list of n nested for loops. So it would be something along the lines of, uh, you know, for i in the range of, of let's say, 0 to, to n minus 3, and then another, another for loop, which we'll call for j from, um, you know, that, that begins at i until n minus 2, and, and so on and so forth. We'd nest four, four loops there. And I'll let you guys try that implementation if you're not familiar with it, uh, because I do want to focus on, on a slightly more clever one, which will give us a, a time complexity of O of m to the power n minus one. In this case, if we have the four sum problem, we can do it in n cubed time. We're gonna find some n to the power four. You get the point. Now. In order to get that kind of optimal solution, in order to get the optimal solution, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to sort the array. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll say this will go m to the power, let's say n minus one. First thing we're going to need to do is sort the array, and then after that, we're going to take a similar approach to what we did in the optimal uh, two sum and three sum problems, which is to use left and right pointers on on kind of the far end of the array, on the far end of it. And we're going to be bringing those in and kind of like an accordion, um, bringing them in and out closer to each other, depending on where our target sum is at at that current spot. Um, the way this will generally look is, is let's pretend that we've got, um, maybe I'll, I'll come up with a few numbers here. We'll get a negative 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 5, 7. We've got a certain target. Now, whatever that target is, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to anchor two of our pointers right here at the beginning. Okay. Then I'm going to set up two pointers, which I'm going to call my left and my right pointer. So the left one's going to be here, the right one's going to be here. These two are the ones that we're going to be bringing inwards toward each other um, as we, we try to approach that one target sum. If any of this is confusing, first off, I'd say don't be too hard on yourself because I don't think this is necessarily intuitive per se. It's not obvious by any stretch of the imagination. It's a really good trick that you're going to pick up and that you will pick up through doing more problems like this. So stick with it if it's not clear yet. Again, if it's really not making any sense, go back and revisit my previous videos on the two and three sum problem because they will do a, kind of a, a more holistic job explaining it there. Anyways, back to what I was saying, as we're, we're going to be bringing these in toward each other and you know, after after we're done doing that, we will then move this inner anchor over and then do another search with our, our left and right pointers, accordion them in and out, so on and so forth. 
once we've kind of exhausted all our possibilities up to here and we check our left and right, then what's going to happen is our first pointer, our first anchor, will move one up and then we're going to repeat the process over again with kind of moving the second anchor over and, and bringing the left and right in and out. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know down below. Um, I'm happy to, to elaborate and answer any questions you may have. But I think at this point, we, we kind of have enough of an idea to dive into the into the code itself to see what that will look like. Uh, first things first, we'll do our standard error checking. Uh, so we'll say if we're given an empty array or the length of the array simply isn't long enough. In this case, if it's anything less than four, we're just going to return an empty, empty array. Now, um, one thing I always like to do, if you've been watching my videos, is I, I like to set my what my result's going to be in, give myself a, a bit of space, and then knowing where I'm, I'm going to return, it kind of keeps everything uh, compact. First step we said after this was to sort the array. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to call nums.sort, and then from here, uh, we're going to jump in and start placing our, our two anchor pointers and then the left and right, or left and right. I, I will omit just a couple steps as we go, just so I can get the structure in, and then we're gonna go back and, and fill in the gap. So for those of you who kind of know where I'm going with this, uh, I'm not gonna omit any of the any of the checking we need to do, so just bear with me. First thing we'll say is uh, for i in range and the length of, of nums. Now, we're only gonna wanna go to the kind of the fourth last element, and the, the reason for that is because, well, we're gonna wanna have three more elements in front of that one that we can check against. Then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna want another pointer that's gonna start right after pointer i and go all the way to the third last point. At this point, we can declare our, our left and right variables. So we'll say left is, excuse me, left is j plus one and right is gonna be right at the end of the array, uh, minus one. And then we're gonna start doing our, kind of our, our according business as I like to call it. So we'll say while left is less than right, now, what we may want to do is we may want to set a, a sum, maybe I'll just call this sum A, and, and that's going to be the sum of the nums of i plus nums of j. Uh, reason being is that we might have to do this calculation a few times over, especially in this next step, so let's just save it in one variable and, and kind of keep our code a bit cleaner. Um, what I'll do is I'll maybe I'll call this sum B and say that it's equal to sum A plus the two pointers that we just uh, declared, which are nums of left and nums of right. Now we need to ask ourselves, how does the sum that we have right now compare to the target that we need? Well, if the two are equal, then we have an answer. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to say uh, result.append an array that contains nums of i, nums of j, nums of left, and nums of right. I don't think the order matters here in any particular case, um, although this is kind of the logical order to go in. Now that we have this, we're gonna to wanna to bring both of our left and right pointers in closer to each other. So we've already taken into account the two numbers that they're calculating, so we gotta bring them one in. Otherwise, if the, the sum that we have is less than the target, we're gonna to wanna to bump our left pointer up. Again, if the sum's too low, we know on the left-hand side, if we bring it up, it's only gonna increase because of, of this nums.sort that we did. Uh, otherwise, last option, um, we are going to have to bring, oh, excuse me. I don't know what that guy was doing here. We're gonna have to bring the right one down by one if the sum is greater than the target. Now, if we try this, we'd just about almost get it, but there's one thing we didn't check for, and this is something that you should, uh, either at this point or ideally even earlier in the interview, ask your interviewer what the state of this array is, and in, in this specific case, whether or not there are duplicate entries in the element. If there are duplicate entries, what we'd be violating is this condition right over here that's asking us to find unique quadruplets. So now we've got to find a way to bake in the fact that there may or may not be duplicate values, and if we find some, we've got to skip over them and keep going because we don't want to be re-adding the same numbers because we won't have, we won't satisfy the unique answers condition. To do that should be relatively straightforward. We're gonna to have to do it for all four pointers. For a pointer i, we want to check if i is greater than zero, um, and if the if nums of i is equal to its its predecessor nums of i minus one, then we want to use this keyword continue to stop this iteration, jump back up to line eight, and go through the next iteration onwards. The reason I'm checking for the size greater than zero is so we don't get an, either an out of bounds exception here in, in some languages, or so we're not negative indexing to the other side of the array. Um, 
which will, will give us some wonky behavior we don't really want. We're gonna do something really similar for j. So we're gonna say if, if j is in this case greater than i plus one and, and numbers of j is equal to its predecessor, uh, again, we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing, continue along and, and bump that j pointer up. Now, for I left and for right, once we find that we've got an answer, we wanna continue and, and make sure that once we, we move left and right in closer to each other, they're not pointing at, at the same value again that we just had, because again, we're not going to have a unique answer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, left is less than right. And first of all, I'll begin with the left one. And I'll say if nums of, of left is equal to nums of left minus one, then what we're gonna wanna do is keep bringing the left pointer up until, until it's not the same as its, its previous value anymore. The reason I don't have to do this you know, greater than zero business is because well, we're never gonna go out of bounds or into negative indexing as the left pointer will always be preceded by pointers i and j. Uh, now, pretty much identical business for the right pointer. Uh, we're gonna check if the right pointer is equal to its predecessor, which in this case is coming from the other side. So we're gonna have to compare it to numbers of right plus one. Uh, if that's the case, that they're equal, then we're gonna bring it, bring it in one more step closer. The reason some of you may be wondering why this one will never go out of bounds, and the reason is is because when we start, the right pointer is pointing at the end of the array. Um, if we jump into this scenario here where we do get an answer that we want, the right value or the right pointer is brought in by one. So by default, if we're kind of checking for its, its predecessor, it'll, it'll pop it back outwards and, and we're not gonna have anything to worry about there. Now, if I haven't screwed the pooch here, should be good to go. Fingers crossed, and ta-da, there we go. So, hope you guys found that helpful. That was the fourth sum problem on the code. Not an easy problem, not trivial by any means. Uh, a lot to learn from this problem though, so if you have any questions about it, leave it in the comment section down below. Any other questions you want me to answer, just let me know as well. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.